This is an old Raspberry Pi that I've got lying around. It's the Raspberry Pi 3. The software still works, which is great, so I could use it for some home lab, home automation stuff, but the thing that makes it very interesting still to this day are these pins that you see at the bottom over here. Again, you could use a Raspberry Pi as a home server, but there are so many of these sensor kits that you can really get quite flexible as far as doing all sorts of measurements in your home lab is concerned. So this is one sensor kit. This is the garden hat from a company called Pimaroni. You can just plug in all sorts of sensors and remove them. And when you put this hat on, then you will now have a Raspberry Pi with sensors that you can swap and plug and play with. They also come in a mini version if you have a Raspberry Pi mini around. But the same company also makes these, which don't allow you to swap sensors, but they do come in a nice package for all sorts of environmental readings. There's light, humidity, temperature, but there's also some extra pins at the bottom over here. And you can use that to plug in this guy. This box has a ventilator to suck air in, and it's got a little laser display that it can use to figure out the size of particles that are in your room. So if you really want to measure air quality, again, a Raspberry Pi is all you need. Now, having all these sensors attached to a Raspberry is great, but the next step, of course, is, well, how do you go about collecting the data and maybe analyzing that? And that's what I want to talk about in this video, because I figured out a fun trick that allows you to take live sensor readings and immediately analyze it with Python. So let's first explain the setup, and then I'm going to show you a very fun demo as well. I'm in Visual Studio Code over here, and I'm about to make a connection to this Raspberry Pi. It's connected to power, and it's also connected to the Wi-Fi that I've got set up here at home. A very convenient feature about VS Code in this case is this button over here on the lower left-hand corner. It's the little blue icon all the way at the bottom here. You can click it, zoom out just a bit now, and what you can do is you can connect to a host. I hit enter here, and then you are going to see a list of things that I can connect to, and these are all pre-configured. So if I go to the final option over there to configure the SSH hosts, I can go to my file. And if you want to know more about setting this up, I'm going to add a link in the show notes on how to make sure the SSH key is moved onto the Raspberry Pi. But the thing that's really convenient is if I were now to type SSH RPI, it's going to connect to this host name over here, it's going to use this user, and I've also got this SSH identity file configured. So I could just use the terminal to SSH in, but there's a small benefit from doing it from VS Code instead. Let me just show you what I mean by that. So again, I'm going to open up the panel, I'm going to try to connect to a host, and I'm going to connect to the Raspberry Pi here. Then this opens up a new Visual Studio Code window, and I can access the terminal, and lo and behold, I'm on the terminal of that Raspberry Pi, and there's a little cool thing that I can do from here. I'm going to go to the development folder. Now, if I were to look in this development folder over here, you can see... I've got a demo.py file that contains a Marimo notebook that I'm about to open, but there's also this folder, Enviro plus Python. Uh, this is an SDK that the provider of the sensor has made. You can get it from GitHub. Again, link will be in the show notes. But this SDK was pre-installed and it will install a bunch of things into my virtual environment that this demo.py file can then go ahead and use. And I think what I got to do is maybe first source my virtual environment. That looks good. And now I should be able to run Marimo edit demo.py. And when I run this, you're going to see this one thing that VS Code does really, really nicely. Hit enter. It's going to start a web browser, but it's also automatically going to forward the right port. You could also do that from the terminal. When you SSH, you can forward the port manually. But the fact that VS Code does this for you under the hood uh, is just a really nice feature. This is also why I prefer to use VS Code for this kind of stuff. And there you have it. I am now inside of a Marimo notebook that has all sorts of Python code that can deal with these sensors. And I'm gonna explain how this notebook works in just a bit, but I wanna draw your attention to these two charts at the bottom over here. What you're gonna notice is that those charts auto update. And to prove that, uh, one of those sensors is a light sensor, the other one is a temperature sensor. And what I could do is I could just hold my hand over the sensor itself, and you're gonna see the light sensor just immediately drop. I can also feel that uh, the device is quite hot actually. So one thing I could also do is just gently blow some air in there. Oh, and funny to see, uh, I'm now holding the light sensor against the window, which is why it's spiking again, but let me try and cool it some more. But anyway, as you can see, I'm able to lower the temperature by blowing some fresh air in it. And also just a small detail, uh, there's actually two sensors at play here. The lower temperature sensor over here, that's the temperature sensor that is plugged on top. There's also a much higher temperature over here, and that is the temperature of the CPU. That's typically much hotter. Now, you might be wondering how I got this live updating chart to work in a Python notebook, and I'll get to that in a bit. But just at this point in time, I would like to just observe that it is really neat to have a live updating chart inside of a notebook. 
because this is also something that you could host yourself, put a good password around it, maybe do something fancy with your network. And then whenever you feel that something might be up with your data, the dashboard that you're going to need in order to see what's happening is also the place where you've got Python code available to you so that you can also dive deep if you really want. But let's now maybe talk about how this is set up. The first part of the setup is in this cell over here, and you can see that I'm importing a bunch of libraries. Remember that SDK that we imported all the way at the beginning? The one that came from the vendor that made the sensor? That SDK brings in a couple of libraries that correspond with the different sensors. So BME280, that is the sensor, I think, over here. That's the one that has the temperature, the humidity, and the pressure. And there's another sensor that handles the gas, and there's another sensor for the light, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I've got this one function over here, and the whole point of that function is to just go through all those different SDKs of those different sensors, and to then return me a dictionary with lots of readings. So I have humidity, I've got temperature, there's some gas readings I have got as well, uh, together with a date timestamp. And Again, every time I run this sample function, I get a dictionary with lots of different values. And just to showcase that, I've got this one cell over here that is calling that one sample function. And if I were now to rerun that cell, then you're going to see some small updates. Sensors have slightly different values. If I were to keep my hand over the Raspberry Pi, then you're also going to see the light sensor drop. If I were to remove my hand, light sensor goes up again. So that's a sample function. That's super useful. The next thing that I got to do is I got to somehow accumulate that. I want to have sensor readings over time. There are a few ways to go about it, but because I really like having notebooks that carry as little state as possible, I do try to be very formal whenever I do care about using state. And for that, Remo also has this state function that you can go ahead and use. You can declare a state variable when you're doing this. That's a good mental picture. And then you get a getter and a setter function. You can get the value of the state or you can set it. And the mental picture here is that you can then write a function that does something like, hey, uh, let's read the current state. Let's then take the state and append a new sample to it. And then we don't want to have an infinitely growing list. So what we're going to do instead is just keep track of the last 200 samples. And that is going to be the new state. It's a bit of a formality, but I really like to be conscious about state in my notebook. But I suppose the main milestone, at least mentally now, is that we had a function called sample that can sample some readings. And I also have this other function I can just go ahead and call called read more. And that is able to increase the state of the thing that I want to visualize. This brings us to these updating charts. And the story here is that I've got this one variable, this SVG widget, if you will. This widget comes out of a library called MoFresh. Remo is really good at the widgets that are interactive that you can play with. And the whole point of this widget is that you just have a placeholder for some HTML and that you can then update that HTML from another cell. You might also notice that I'm using a library here called Altair. Uh, the really cool thing about that library is that you're able to just write Python, but then end up with an HTML artifact, if you will. So the whole name of the game is to just declare this one widget over here, and then in another cell, get more data, update our state, and then use that to generate a new chart, which we're going to just place here. And this is a loop that you can continue and continue and continue. This is the loop in question, by the way, while true. So this is something that's going to keep on running forever. I'm going to sleep for about half a second. I'm going to read me some data from the device. And then I'm going to update that SVG widget uh, with this one function that I made up front. It's just going to get the most recent state. And again, this state will have been updated by this function over here. So lo and behold, I now have a updating chart. Now, the thing that's really cool about this setup is whenever I feel like I can choose to just stop this cell, I can hit this pause button over here, and then I can just get the current state. And this is a list of dictionaries. And a list of dictionaries, that is something that you can pass along to a data frame library like Polars. And because this is Marimo, we get a nice little widget that allows us to explore all this data that we've collected. So if I really wanted to, I can definitely dive deep. And I could also expand this notebook in such a way that maybe once every minute or so, I upload some data to a storage server such that all of my readings are just kept forever, if that's something I'm interested in, really collecting data. And all of this is really just running from this little Raspberry. But the thing that's kind of interesting here is that the Raspberry is really just running the Python code. If I'm doing heavy things in the browser, that is actually happening in the browser that I'm running my normal computer on. So in a way, it also just alleviates the Raspberry Pi to just focus on the thing that I wanted to do by using this SSH setup that I've got. And, and let's also emphasize, I'm just scratching the surface here with what you can do with sensors. But what I can imagine, if you've got an attic like me, and you've got a bit of a home lab set up, then one of the most natural things to do is just to check for the air quality and then do things like open up the window when it's necessary. This is just a starting template. I might actually do a few more of these experiments because I think having a reactive notebook that is able to update live does really lend itself nicely for a couple of these sensor projects. 
with a Raspberry Pi. I'm running this on a Raspberry 3, which by now is definitely an old model, and it really just runs this Remo notebook just fine. And charts that auto-update, but also being able to dive in deep when necessary, that is just a really nice feeling, especially when you have your own little home lab set up. A good next step for this work, by the way, would be to maybe actually collect all this data in some sort of a cron job, which you can also do. This Marima notebook is a Python file under the hood, so if you want to run this as cron, you can totally do that. And then I can also figure out some sort of real-time situation where I get a message on my phone that tells me, hey, Vincent, you got to open up a window because the air quality in your room is just bad now. So if you like running those experiments, definitely know Raspberry Pi is all you need. Check the links in the show notes and feel free to ask me any questions about using a Raspberry Pi with a Marimo notebook. I'm having a lot of fun with this and I hope you will.